Let's go to Denver, Colorado and talk to dear Marie. What's up, Marie? Hi, Dr. John. How are you? Partying. Um, That's not true. I'm not Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Um, so I lost my husband about a year ago. Oh, and God. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What happened? Uh, PTSD. He died by suicide? Yeah. Oh, God, I'm so sorry, Marie. Thank you. Um, Hold on. So Get, short, take a breath, take a breath, okay. take a breath, take a breath. Take a big, yeah. big, deep breath. <sighs> yeah. Don't blow by it. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, shortly after I lost him, um, my best friend and her family were in a severe car accident and it looked like they weren't going to survive and their whole family survived and they're all relatively back to normal life right now. Um, and I find myself really angry and jealous mm -hmm. that their family is intact and mine is not. And how do I move forward with that friendship? Um, am I a monster for having these feelings? It, it's a lot. Yeah. It, to answer the, the question underneath the question, underneath the question here, you're not crazy and you're not a monster. No. Your anger and your jealousy and your frustration and heartbreak, that's all good and right. Or to be a nerd about it, it's totally normal. I'm sorry. Thank you. How do I move forward? <laughs> You're like, okay, that was cute. What do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, what, what, was, what was your husband's name? Neil. Tell me about him. Um, he was a veteran. Mm-hmm. And probably the smartest guy I've ever met in my life. Um, he was really an amazing husband and father. And he was somebody that we always joked was everybody's buddy. He never, never, ever met an enemy. And he was carrying around a suitcase full of, full of darkness, huh? Uh, evidently. Did he leave you a note? He did. Summarize. Didn't say much. Didn't say much. Oh, um, just that he was sorry and that he, he loved me and trusted me to do what was best for our kids. <sighs> and, uh, that he hoped we would see each other again someday. You know that's not your fault, Marie, right? I know. And I know that you've spent every day of the last year asking yourself, what if I had just said this? What if I had done this? What if I hadn't done that? So hear me say, this one's not on you. He's damn lucky to have you in his life. Thanks. <clears throat> so the path out is the path I was just I was just trying to to mirror for you, okay? Or just trying to give you a picture of what it looks like. And it's okay. slow and it's short and it's awful. It's something you have to practice, okay? And the reason I'm telling you that is I don't want to lie to you because I don't want to get off the phone and you think balloons are going to fall from the sky because that's not how it works. Sure. Okay. What's going to happen is my, one of my greatest friends in the world, his name's Trevor. And Trevor um, was working at a print shop and he tore his bicep. He's a big muscle head. He's like the hottest guy in the world. And he was beefcaking and he tore his bicep and it rolled up on his shoulder and he got it surgically repaired. And he had to do all of this PT work, all this uh, physical therapy. 
And he said it was brutal and it was hard and it hurt all the time. And then after a while, he, quit, he ran out of PT because his insurance quit paying. So he just went back to his regular life and he kind of favored it and favored it and favored it. And one day a box fell off at the print shop and he reached up and grabbed the box just, just reflexively. And he remembers going, huh, that didn't hurt. Like that's, he was well. And so that's what's going to happen. If you'll do these things, I'm going to tell you, what's going to happen is you're going to just have an experience in six or nine months when you are going to be overwhelmed with gratitude and laughter and joy. And it will hit you on the way home. Oh, wait a minute. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how it's going to happen. There's not going to be glitter or anything falling from the ceiling, okay? Sure. You spent the last year in a black hole. And if I'm being really truthful with you, you're going to be there probably for a little bit longer. Okay. It's hard. Yeah. You got little ones too? Yeah. Um, my oldest is two and a half and um, he died when I was three months pregnant. And so the baby is five months. Boys or girls? Girls. So this will be hard for a long, long time. Okay. Okay. As part of your, part of the story that's going to be your life is letting these little girls know that daddy was sick and that he loved them more than life itself. And you got a note that proves it. Yeah. Okay. So number one, you've got to know you're not nuts and you're not crazy. When you get mad, when you get angry, and when you see a dad holding his daughter, holding his other daughter's hand, walking in the mall and you just want to go punch him in the mouth, that feeling is right. It's okay. You're not crazy. Don't go hit him because then you'll go to jail. <laughs> but I want you to not be like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? I'm the worst. I can't believe. No, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. And then you spent the last year really pissed off that he left you hanging. Right? Yeah. That that anger is right too. But when you're able to, I want you to begin to also, plus the anger, not the anger goes away, plus the anger. Remember how he lit up a room. And remember the joy he brought to other people. And remember how he made you feel when you were down that one time. And what we're doing is we are slowly but surely turning our dial to one of darkness, to one of light, to one of gratitude, to use a word that has been beaten to death in the Instagram world. And what we're going to do with your friend is it's literally practicing. We're going to practice honoring that family. Practice by writing them a letter about how happy you are for them and never give it to them. Just practice writing that. And say the words in that letter because no one's ever going to read it. I'm so freaking pissed off that my life, like my family got busted up and yours gets to remain whole. I'm so grateful y'all are whole. See what I'm saying? All we're doing is practicing. And when you're around them and you feel sorrow and you feel your chest get tight, that's all okay. But I want you to practice feeling it, not just getting so righteously indignant and angry that you wallpaper over it. Okay. You're going to miss Neil for a long, long, long time. And that's ultimately what that anger is, is I miss my guy. Like my forever guy, I miss him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, you're absolutely right. You also need to find a friend or two that you can say these things out loud to because you can't do this by yourself. Grief demands a witness. So you're going to have to find one or two women that you can text that you really trust with your soul or that you can call and say, I'm going to visit so-and-so and her stupid freaking perfect husband with still has all his hair and didn't cover himself up in tattoos and doesn't have a jacked up Jeep out in the, he's going to be there too. 
and they need to be able to go boo with you <laughs> on your side, right? Yeah. And then you can walk in and your chest is going to get tight and you're going to see this guy. He's going to smile and say, welcome to our house. And your friend's going to be, your girlfriend's going to be there and your daughters are going to run in the house and you're going to feel it for a second. Damn it, Neil, you should be here too. And then we're going to walk in and we're going to smile and we're going to choose gratitude. Not choose faking. We're going to choose gratitude. Look how beautiful this house is. Look how beautiful this marriage is. And what you'll find is if you commit to practicing this over time, in addition to feeling your anger, feeling so mad. And by the way, this anger will come in waves. This, this grief comes in waves. It's going to be four years old when your daughter hears something from somebody at school and comes home and wants to have another conversation about her daddy. God, you're going to get pissed again. You have to have this conversation. You got to tell her, you know, you know what I mean? This is going to be part of your yeah. story. Those are all okay. They're all okay. Hmm. If nothing else, you hear me say, you're not screwed up. You're not messed up. You're not irredeemable. You're not a monster. You're a mom who loves her two baby girls and you're a wife who is heartbroken because you lost your forever guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you written him a letter yet? I told him you hate him. Uh, no, nothing so formal as writing a letter. You got to do that. Okay. I always tell people to write three letters. You got to tell them to write him the letter about how mad you are how upset you are, how frustrated and angry you are. You got to write him a letter that tells him how sad you are. Then you got to write him a letter that that's going to let him know who you're going to become in the coming years. What he's going to miss. Because Marie's going to be the best single mom that the world has ever seen. And she's going to make meaning of this madness and you're going to not forget the, the, the forget the name Neil because Neil, Neil was all right. Neil was just sick. Yeah. But those three letters are important because it takes what's in that, in your body and puts it out into the ether. It also gives your body permission to be angry and really sad and optimistic all at the same time. Will you, com will you commit to that? I will, yeah. And then the fourth letter is that pretend letter. God help you, don't send it. Please don't send it <laughs> to your friends. <laughs> where you're no, practicing. we're good friends, but I don't know that we're that good. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I have an un, as my wife says, uh, I'm awkward in what conversations I will just have at the dinner table with our friends. Cause I thought every friend group did that, but evidently they do not. But I even would be weirded out if someone was like, man, I really just being around you really um, pisses me off and makes me mad. <laughs> like I would be like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, if I, if I, maybe a counselor, maybe a good person or some other yeah. friends, but yeah. um what we're going to do over the next one to two to five to six to 10 years is slowly turn that dial from one of black hole to one of gratitude. And when you see a whole family, it becomes something that you quietly pump your fist and you say, hell yeah. And when you see a broken family or a family experiencing loss, it's, you're going to beeline to them because you're going to have been there and you're going to be able to look somebody in the eye and put your hand on both sides of their face and say, I know you call me anytime. But that's not for now. Right now is still healing. No. That's for healing right now. So start with writing um, Neil letters, all three of them. And listen to me. I'll be with you all through this. You holler anytime I can help. Walk alongside me. I mean, I'm walking alongside you any, any way I can help. And I want you to hang on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of Own Your Past, Change Your Future. Um, it's, just, it's a measly gift I can give to you. It's all I got. Um, Actually, I'm going to send you the parents and kids cards. It'll be something fun for you and your daughters to play with. It's the questions, even though I guess you told me they're really, really young. So you may put them in a drawer for a few years. 
Um, but I want you to read on your past, change your future as just whew, here we are. This is what grief feels like. This is what grief looks like. And then what are we going to do next? I'm so grateful for you. I'm heartbroken with you. We're all heartbroken with you, Murray. And we'll be with you with next steps. Thank you so much for being brave. Thank you for the call. 